Hello, welcome back to video number three of my Mount and Blade Warband modding and mapping tutorial series. My name is Creatox, and let's just get right into it. And at this point, uh, you should already have a color map, a decent color map of the map you are actually going to mod, and a decent height map of the map that you are going to mod. And you should uh, as well have uh, properly set up all the tools that you are needing and set up the game and make sure that you have everything correctly installed and stuff like that. If you do not have done this, uh, please go back to video one, uh, respectively video two, in order to see how to do those things. And the first thing that this video is going to cover is performance. So for this, we're going to enter the map editor, Torquens map editor, and we are on the original Warband map. Or we're not, because I forgot about something. In order to be capable of decently modding the Warband map, uh, respectively make it so that you're actually working with Warband variables, you need to copy those three files, map text, map icons text, and parties text, which should already be part of your module that you just created for Warband. You need to copy this over into the native folder of the original Mountain Blade game, okay? Copy it in there. And you can make a backup. As you can see here, the editor is automatically making backups whenever you make changes to the map or when you load it, uh, you load the editor. But basically, I don't need any backup because I never play uh, the original game ever, so I don't need to back this up. But you probably want to do this uh, just to be on the safe side. However, you need to copy those files over so that you are actually not working with original game files, but with the Warband files, okay? That's uh, essential. Don't forget about this. Now we're going to open the map editor and we're talking about performance first. And... Yeah, that's the original Warband map. It's slightly different to the original game's map uh, concerning performance and some settlements are uh, uh, have another place. And yeah, about performance, I'm going to switch now to the wireframe, uh, uh, to the vertex mode. And vertexes are all those green dots that you see here, okay? Those are vertexes. And basically those are mesh points, I'd say. They are used to... Uh, hold faces together, uh, faces of texture together, and they are also used in game by the AI to navigate. So, uh, maybe you already seen this in one of your uh, games, they will always navigate uh, to those points if they go across the map, the AI and your, uh, uh, your character as well, they will always move along those green dots. And those green dots are also responsible for detail of your map, okay? So, the higher, the, uh, the more vertexes there are, the higher the detail of your map can be made, okay? But it comes at a cost. The higher the detail and the more vertexes there are, the lower the performance is going to get. And in the original Warband map, you will notice uh, there's a high density of vertexes in the middle of the map, uh, uh, the part of the map that you're actually able to access, which is inside the red border. And if you go out to the map, you will see that vertexes count gets lower and lower. If you go along here, if you go completely outside of the border, you see there's almost no vertex at all here, okay? And this is done for performance reasons, okay? And this, this, way they, uh, and this way the original creators of Warband made sure that you have a high performance, but still a high level of detail, okay? And what I want to show you now is how uh, the map editor actually is working. And if we open the settings of the map editor, you will see there's this variable, map density, and we have the map width and height. And this stands for new maps, as you can see, a size of new maps when created. And mesh density of new maps when created, okay? And I'm going to show you now, uh, because the editor is working with a density of 0 0.5. Oops. There I want to go. And the map editor is working with a, a, a density of 0 0.5. And I'm going to show you now what, what's uh, happening if you're creating a new map. Yes, I want to. And as you can see, density is much higher of the vertexes. We have a much denser count of vertex. Let me switch back to the native uh, map, then you will see this again. You see, density of the original map is not as tight as it is when you're creating a new map. And creating a new map has also another drawback. Because if you go out to the map, uh, map uh, mesh density, the vertex density, doesn't get lower, okay? It's slightly lower here, but that's because I haven't uh, already set up the map like I wanted, and this is what we're going to do now, so I can better show you what I'm talking about. Let's exit again. No. And... Yeah. Uh, I think I mentioned this in the second video already. I'm going to work with a resolution of 1200 to 960. Or no, it wasn't 1920 to... 1580 like that 
And I'm going to work. And uh, now we're going to go into the map again. I'm going to show you what happens when you create a new map. And as you can see, the first thing you should have noticed here, uh, uh, the map takes much longer to load. And if uh, I switch to vertex mode and now go over the map, do you see the lag? Uh, there's a huge amount of lag. And that's because now that we set up the resolution, a bigger uh, resolution for our map, you also see the effect, what is happening with the vertexes outside of the border. See this? Uh, if you go that far, if you uh, take the original map in comparison, yeah, as you can see, it's struggling. It's really struggling to do anything at all. Yes, I want to switch back to the native. See? Much better performance, obviously. And uh, just memorize this part, okay? And now we go to uh, create a new map again. And there we have our border. That's the original size of the warband map. And you see, beyond this point, there's no change in vertex density, okay? And... I haven't figured out why the editor creator made it so that you that that the mm, density is not getting lowered, and yeah, uh, basically you're not really capable of working with the map like this, okay? And I just have to show you this here because I actually want to uh, uh, build up on another information. And just for the subject of this video, we're going to switch back to a resolution of one thousand two hundred to nine hundred eighty, and. Yeah, the original map density, as I already shown you, is 0 0.4. You so you probably want to work with this res uh, with this density setting. Oh yeah, and another thing I forgot about. I'm just going to put this in here, cut uh, the video, and put this in here. Another important thing: if you take a look at your map settings again, and we're talking about the resolution here, uh, the resolution of your image file should always be half the size of the resolution that you are using in your map editor. So I have 1920 multiplied by 1580. And for me, this would be 960 multiplied by 784. And you want to make sure that you have this applied for both map types, for the height map and the color map. And you simply do this for detail reasons, okay? It's important that you do this. If you don't do this, you will get messed up with detail. And just believe me, that's better for the sake of us all. Thank you. And now we're going to switch over to the subject of fixing a, uh, your map so that you are capable of properly exporting it and uploading it in your game. And we're going to create a new map. Yes. And we're going to import our... No, come on. We're going to... Please. Don't fuck with me. We're going to import our color map. Uh, we're going to import our height map. There we have the Alps, yeah, properly, the Pyrenees, and Atlas Mountains, ah, perfect. That's perfect, and now, there are a couple of things uh, that you want to fix in order uh, uh, to access the map in-game and make sure that you can access the map uh, for all the other editors and for Blender and stuff like that. And the first thing that you want to fix is uh, the range, uh, the accessibility in-game. Because usually if you uh, uh, leave the borders like they are now, though, uh, like they are now, this red and yellow borders, you couldn't exceed this point, okay? That's your camera limit, and you could not go with a camera and your character beyond this point. And in order to be uh, capable of accessing everything on the map, you basically have to extend those borders. And the way you do this is by simply clicking the castle icon down here, and then left-clicking on the border, and drag, drag it outside uh, to the outside of your map, like that. Okay? You just drag it all the way to the border, and... Yeah, if you want to uh, navigate again, you need to go to the hate mode and I'm not going to completely cover this in the course of this video because it would take too long I just showed you what you need to do and now I'm going to show you where I would put my borders uh, which points of the map I wanted to access and the northwestern far northwestern point that I'd uh, uh, cover would be Iceland and it would be the northern tip of Scandinavia for the northeastern point and for the southwestern western point it would be the Canarian Islands and uh, Morocco and West Africa, it would be in this point, okay, and for the southeastern point, it would be the Black Sea, respectively, Egypt. Okay, that, that's Libya here. Uh, come on, where are you? You see the slack? Performance. That's what I was talking about, but we're going to cover this in another video, how you're improving performance. And, yeah, basically, that would be my uh, southeastern tip here, and this is uh, where I would put my border. And, yeah, you need to fix this so that you can access everything in the game. 
And another thing that you want to fix is those settlements. As you can see, all those settlements are on the ocean. And you want to move all those settlements and spawns to land. If you do not do this uh, and try to upload the map into your game, it will simply crash. Because it cannot handle uh, uh, settlements on the ocean tiles. And you could fix this in the Torquem's map editor, but simply uh, simply because Torquem's map editor is using the original Warband game, it cannot handle all the settlements because we are working with Warband variables. And in order to fix this, you need to actually uh, save the map. And you can uh, ignore this error message here. One or more spawns towns are on an impassable tile. Consider moving them to prevent a gang crash. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about before. You can uh, uh, ignore this. And you can check in your... Yeah, if the map has this huge amount of size, then it's probably saved. And you need to save. And as you can already see, those those uh, settlements that are not supposed to be on water, they are tacked in red color. And you need to move all of them in order to be uh, able to access the mapping game. And yeah, as I said, before you're saving the map, you want to pull, uh, push all the red borders to the corner of your map like you want them. Then you're going to save the map editor. And then you need to do something that you have the correct borders for uh, the warband, you need to copy those variables here. Map min, map max for x, and map min and map max for epsilon from your uh, original games folder into your module folder. Module.ini, okay? You need to copy those variables like that. So that you have the same uh, border settings that you are using in native. It doesn't do this automatically. You need to do this manually. You need to copy them over. and. Uh, um, but it does save the map automatically for you, conveniently. And now you can uh, access the map in the Cartographer Editor. There you go. And there we have the Cartographer Editor, which gives you a much higher performance. And yeah, as you can see, there are a couple of things, especially on the border of the map. I want to fix this later, and I want to fix those stupid spikes here. But that's a subject of another video. I just want to quickly show you how you are moving those settlements so that you are capable of accessing the map in game. And you want to make, not only you want to make sure that all the settlements are on a uh, land tile, you also want to make sure that they are not on top of a mountain tile. Okay? They shouldn't be on any of those gray tiles if you have any gray tiles at all. Uh, if you properly made your image tile, this shouldn't be happening. Obviously, I didn't do this. And the way you are moving settlements is basically by right clicking them. And then move your mouse uh, arrow to the place you want it, and then just press G. Like that. Okay? Just press G, and then those settlements are moved. And I'm going to move those settlements now, but I'm going to cut the video here, simply because uh, this is going to take some time, okay? But I'm going to be back once, I did, once I've done that. And then I'm going to show you what you need to do so that you can access the map in-game, and you can also uh, apply the change for the Torker map editor. See you then. Bye-bye. See you later, alligator. So, and here we are back now in the uh, Torquem's, uh, in the Cartographer map editor. And as I said, uh, you're supposed to move all those settlements on land tiles. Oh, obviously there's one last settlement I missed, I believe. That's a leftover from my last edit. It should be, uh, how is it named? Yeah, Praven, it's Praven. And I'm gonna move it there. And now you should have everything set up properly. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to export your changes. Uh, you don't necessarily need to save. If you look down here, you will see all uh, the functions that you can do. And you don't necessarily need to change the map uh, to save the map simply because you haven't made any change. But maybe you still want to do this simply because uh, the cartographer of you, uh, actually enhances this map when you're saving it. So, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Watch the uh, size. And now, if you save it with F5, you see there's a change in size. Uh, it, uh, uh, to, uh, it cut the size uh, by one third. And now what you want to do to uh, 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 bake your uh, change to the settlements is press F9, save edited parties. Okay. And make sure that he did this. Saving notified parties. Done. Yes. Now you can exit the cartographer. And now a word uh, about difference of the map editor and the cartographer editor. The map editor is working with the original game files and it's also working with the already compiled text files. And the cartographer does not do this. The cartographer actually works with the uh, uncompiled source files. So the party change that you just applied were written to this module here. Okay. And we're opening this in Notepad++. 
then you see the changes here. You see this? The changes are already applied. And yeah, now in order to be able to access uh, 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 in game and in order to be and uh, make it so that the Torquem's map editor is using those variables and so that they bake inside uh, uh, the cartographer as well, you need to actually compile those files, okay? And I already covered this in the first video, I believe. You just have to click the build module, but, and now it is compiling those files. Done. And now you should find the compiled files over here. And since you haven't changed anything but the parties text, you can basically delete all the other files. And now you want to make sure that you restore the original name of the text file and uh, you can remove the name of your module, okay? You can remove this and now you just cut it out and put it into your module folder. And you also want to copy this over to the, uh, uh, to the native folder of original Mountain Blade, okay? And when we, uh, if we are going into the cartographer. The change should have been bacon. Yes, as you can see, the settlements are where they are supposed to be. Okay. And if we go into the Torquem's map editor, there should be the same result. Yes, as you can see. Perfectly. Now the settlements are all on the land, but as you can see, there are still some of them that are on a water tile. And, uh, don't be worried, you can actually fix them in Torquem's map editor. And why they are left over, that's simply because those are variables from the original game. And the other settlements that we covered, they are also in the Warband game. So basically, this means that uh, Warband doesn't cover this city and those uh, spawn points here. And, yeah, basically try to save the map again here. Now yeah, come on. No, please. Then you will get the error message. And you will get the settlements highlighted that are on impassable tiles. And it's the only one. So we can basically switch over to selection mode, select it, and then we can just track it to a land tile like that. And make sure you do the same for the looter spawn point and the uh, tantra spawn point. And the other one is here. No, that's the coast spawn point. You can actually leave that on a water tile because this is the spawn point of, uh, how they are named? Pirates. Okay, you can leave it there. And there's another one over here. You can basically leave them. And now you can save the map, I hope. <laughs> I hope I'm not talking bullshit. Basically, now you can save the map without complaints. There you go. Just do it again so that you see that it's actually working. Map saved. You don't have any problems. And it's also safe for the cartographer, but uh, for sure, now if you go into the cartographer again, you will see that uh, maybe one or two settlements are replaced again, okay? Now this time we're lucky, nothing happened, so it baked, everything went alright, and now we can actually access the map in-game. And just start your game. Make sure you tipped your uh, module file, then just start Mount a Blade Warband, Yeah, and make sure that you are using the correct module, that you are using your own module when starting up the game. And there we are. Uh, I had to change my OBS in, a in order to make a game capture because I was actually capturing the desktop and I had to switch. That was, uh, uh, that's the reason why I interrupted the video at this point. <laughs> yeah, and as you can already see the enhanced graphics, that's because of the EMB. And you are going to see this in game if we are going to enter the game as well. Hunter, Street Urgent, Poacher, Wanderlust. All in on intelligence, my name is Test. And I'm good with the pole arms as well as with the, uh, with archery. Athletics, looting, tracking, pathfinding, inventory management, and trade. That's all I need. Done. And I'm starting in Craven. Please continue. Yes, thank you. There we are. And now I'm probably getting some echo, that's simply because I'm not playing with headphones, but for the subject of this video, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Whoa. What the fuck? 
until you <laughs> die, bitch. And come on, trader. A little bit faster, please. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. No, I don't want to. And here we are. Here we are in our not so very beauty <laughs> Europe map on the island of Ireland. <coughs> That's because I moved Craven here just for testing purposes. Uh, Ireland is actually my testing instance uh, for testing other things. And as you can see, you are not capable of going anywhere on the map. That's uh, the reason. And that's because of the borders I was talking before. And if you look into the distance, you see the southern part of Europe. And yeah, uh, as I said, you need to extend those borders so that you are actually capable of going anywhere on the map. I showed you how to do this. And basically, that's about it. That's about uh, video number three. And uh, I showed you how to import the map into the game and that's essential that's very vital you want to be capable of importing the map into your game so that you are actually capable of testing it in order to fix bugs and stuff like that okay so as i said uh, we uh, covered every subject we covered the performance we covered uh, how to extend the borders we covered how to move the settlements and we covered all the import variants so that you can use the map everywhere and in the next video we're going to cover uh, how to fix performance with blender and maybe a couple of other things i'm not sure about that yet uh, how i'm going to continue but what I want you to do for the next video is perfectly readying up your map to this point. So you want to have the fixed borders, you want to have the fixed settlements. Maybe you could already arrange the settlements where you later want them uh, if we start to uh, make our own factions. Uh, or I don't know what you're planning. Whatever you're planning, you probably want to use the opportunity to move the settlements where you want to have them. And I want you to uh, fix all those things that I just said so that you're able to access the map in-game and importing it everywhere and make sure that you have... Uh, the resolution, the size of the map that you actually want and ready everything up so that we can decently work in video and number yeah, four. as I said, uh, that's vital for testing. And we talked about performance and how the density is impacting for your performance. And the subject of the next video is uh, uh, the uh, editing inside Blender to improve your uh, performance by reducing, manually reducing the amount of vertexes. Because actually, I want to work with that resolution and this density so for this i need to prepare the map and i don't want to do this in the video because it wouldn't work at all but i'm going to ready up my map for this and then i'm going to show you how you export the map in cartographer to be uh, capable in uh, to mod it in blender okay and that's the subject of the next video this basically ends this video and yeah i hope you'll be back the next time i'll be back see you then thank you thank you for watching